it's the 10th of October today and it's round about this time of year you really do appreciate these bushy salvias now this is a familiar one salvia hot lips and I've cut this back a couple of times since spring and it always comes back and produces hundreds of these little flowers now in the summer it's not one of the most spectacular plants in the garden but at this time of year these are the sort of plants that are going to keep things going they're going to keep your garden looking like it's full of colour and if the weather keeps up we should have a few more weeks of this in full flower and here's another salvia I feature this a lot in my videos because it's so good the salvia patens patio deep blue cut this back a couple of times and it's come back with new flowers and it's a stunning plant and again we're coming up towards the middle of October and this is really standing out in the garden when a lot of plants have finished flowering a lot of the perennials have died down now the salvia is an indispensable plant if you want flowers in the autumn I've done this often when I really want a new plant this is a Leicesteria Golden Lanterns and it's a big shrub I planted it here because I didn't know what to do with it knowing full well it was far too big for the, the, the planting position now I thought I could maybe get away with it for, for about a year in the same spot but if you look at the growth rate of this in a year it's tremendous this was a really small plant and in one year this is the growth that's come from it in fact I've actually cut it back around the edges so it looks like I'll need to move this but this is a fantastic shrub for a bigger spot if you move this if I move this somewhere in the garden with a bit more space it adds a fantastic amount of colour different type of foliage colour that can contrast with your darker greens all the leaves will drop off in the winter but even so it's worth growing as well as the salvias the fuchsias are still going this time of year this one's called Mrs Popple don't see much of these in the spring but once these get going in summer they'll carry on going all the way through to the frost some of them will produce more than others when it starts getting colder but again like I said this is another indispensable plant for flowers for the autumn months I've spoken before about these campanulas it's a nondescript plant really when it's not in flower but it will flower twice and this is what it started to do now all the areas of the garden where I've got a bit of this campanula growing they've started putting the flowers out again it's not as good as the first time round but even still it's still more flowers in the autumn when they're starting to run out of them this little hooker is hiding underneath a bit of a thug of a shrub that I've featured before the Hypericum but this really goes to show that you can actually get some impressive flowers on hookahs they tend to be quite nondescript they flower for months but you don't really look at them but this little one here it's a little dwarf variety called Blondie I'll have to check that one out it's got these nice little yellow flowers that stand out this time of year when a lot of other things have finished the catmint is starting to fade now it's coming to the end of the flowering period and it's been going for months when the bees start running out of flowers to go to 
if you've got the cat mints it'll keep them going right past summer and heading into autumn I've often tried and failed with Agastache and the reason why I like them is I love the orange flowers and the fantastic scent. The problem is they never survive the winter. These plants like it really really dry and our winters here are just not good for them. They, they just rot away in my garden. So this year I bought a really cheap pack of seeds and the one that I grew was called Apricot Sprite and every single seed grew into a plant. So we had that many, I didn't know what to do with them. So I just put a few of them just in here in this really, really tight border. And as you can see it's a really nice looking flower. But will it survive? We'll find out next spring. It might actually like it here, right on the edge. But before I planted them in with a lot of other plants, tried to give them a bit of drainage, and it just has not worked. We'll find out next year how hardy these are. Cottontilla, I must feature it in every video I do. But as you can see, we're in October, it's still flowering. Just keeps going, just keeps going right through till the frost sets in. This might be of interest if you're looking to buy a Mediterranean fan palm. Now, I've mentioned this before, it's a fantastic palm tree and other than the Trachycarpus species, I think it's the second best one you can grow in northern climates. Really unfussy plant. Now this is your standard plant, um, as you can see, I've got, to, I've got quite a few spikes, your bog standard Chemerox palm is a bit spiky, the Volcano is, it does have these spikes but it's, it's not as vicious, but what I was going to say is that these do tend to vary quite wildly. I'll show you what I mean. Here's the same palm tree. I'm not sure if this comes across on the camera, but this is almost like a blue colour. It's a different colour to the palm that you've just seen. Now, I don't actually know why that's the case. If anybody knows, um, let us know in the comments. But it just shows you that they can vary in the size and shape of these um, Mediterranean fan palms. And look at this one for example. This is a Volcano. And normally with a Volcano, it grows quite compact. And the leaves are a lot smaller. But they're quite big on this plant. So they do seem to vary in the way that they grow. Now, one word of warning, I've bought one of these plants from one of your common garden centres and it just wasn't a great plant at all. Constantly sending out suckers and the leaves just didn't look great. I tend to find if you're going to buy a palm tree, get one from a palm tree specialist. So in the UK, you're talking hardy palms, or another company I've used, Big Plant Nursery. Now they grow quite a few exotic plants and they do love the palm trees and they just the quality is just far superior to picking one of these up from your local garden centre. I find a lot of the time they're cheaper as well. But yeah, just interesting to know the way you can get different shades and different shapes out of the same type of tree. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.